Hi, I'm Erin Clark from wellplated.com, and if you have ever wished that cookies could be good for you, then I have just the recipe for you. These are my chocolate chip peanut butter protein cookies. They taste like an ooey gooey chocolate chip cookie, but don't contain any butter or flour, and there's a whopping seven grams of protein. They also come together in just one bowl. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make them. Now, it starts out, as the name suggests, with peanut butter. Can you already tell this recipe is gonna be good? So I'm gonna scoop the peanut butter right into the bowl. And if you don't like peanut butter or if you have an allergy, you can really use any kind of nut butter here. I am a little bit of a peanut butter freak, so that's what I love to use. Next, we are going to add one whole egg and one egg white. That's just the right amount to make sure that the cookies are nice and moist. And then by adding the extra egg white, we actually sneak in a little bit of extra protein. Next, some coconut sugar. I love coconut sugar. It is a little bit less refined than regular sugar, and it tastes super similar to brown sugar. A little bit of salt. Ah, oh, vanilla extract, always a favorite. Gotta have it when I bake. And now we are just going to start out by whisking this together. Just wanna go really gently until the ingredients are smooth and nicely combined. I also like to tell myself that this is where I'm getting my workout so that I earn the cookie and then I can eat a couple extra. If you wanted, you could use a mixer for this recipe, but between you and me, I absolutely hate doing dishes. So anytime I can save myself something to wash, I am going to. Ooh, I can smell the peanut butter. Okay, as you can see, it's a little sticky and that is totally fine. Now we are going to move on to our dry ingredients and that starts with a little bit of baking soda. And rather than mix the dry ingredients in a separate bowl, which again, my hatred of dishes, all coming back to the one bowl, I found that if I just sprinkle the baking soda over the top and then just kind of lightly sprinkle in the other dry ingredients, as long as there aren't too many, then the cookies turn out just fine. So our next dry ingredient, as I mentioned, these are protein cookies and where they get the majority of their protein is from vanilla protein powder. Makes sense, right? I also like to use the vanilla because it gives the cookies a little bit of extra flavor. It almost acts like flour in the recipe. Next up, we have coconut flour, and coconut flour is just what it sounds like. It's actually made from ground coconuts. It's completely gluten-free, and it is naturally really high in fiber and protein, so that makes these cookies even better for you. We are just going to kind of gently push and fold all of these together. And as you can see at the beginning, it looks really dry. And you might be thinking to yourself, Erin, you are crazy. What is going on here? How is this going to turn into a cookie? But persevere, I promise you, the dough will come together in the end. Look at that. As I promised, this has turned into a traditional cookie dough. And at this point, you kind of want to take a look at it because depending on the brand of nut butter that you use and your particular protein powder, the dough might be a little bit dry or a little bit too sticky. It definitely is going to be a little bit moist, but it shouldn't be clinging to your fingers. So this for me is just right, but if your dough is too sticky, you can sprinkle in a little extra protein powder. And if it is too dry, just sprinkle in a little bit of milk. Now, we could bake the cookies right here, right now, but why would we do that when we can still add chocolate chips? I have three tablespoons of mini chocolate chips, and I am just going to fold them right into the batter. Now, this is gonna seem kind of funny, but you wanna scoop these cookies really small. I'm using just a regular tablespoon measure, and the reason that you wanna do that is that if you make them too big, because coconut flour has some pretty unique properties, it acts really differently than wheat flour in recipes. If you make them too large, it won't bake evenly. This makes sure that the cookies are perfectly soft and chewy in the center, and because they come out little, I think that means we can eat more, and I'm all about more cookies. Once you have your little mounds on the sheet, you wanna take them and shape them into round cookies. And I like to press down on them a little bit because the cookies don't spread much during baking, but they will puff up. All right, now that my cookies are nicely arranged on the baking sheet, I'm going to pop them into the oven. These bake super quickly. They're gonna be ready in about five to six minutes. And you wanna pull them out while they still look a little underbaked because they'll continue baking on the sheet as they cool. 
All right, our cookies are out of the oven and my kitchen smells amazing. I wanna show you how you know that they're done. If you look at these cookies, they look pretty underbaked, but when I touch them, they feel dry to the touch and they're still a little bit soft and gooey in the center and that is exactly what you want. I'm gonna let them cool on the baking sheet for about three minutes and then transfer them to a wire rack to cool completely or to cool for as long as I can stand it until I eat them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you love these chocolate chip peanut butter protein cookies as much as I do. And I look forward to seeing you back here next time. Happy baking.